All right, here we go. Here's another AI product. Let's try it out and talk about it so I can get some views. So bolt.new, you can type in a prompt and you can have it generate an app. Okay, nothing really new there. What I'm going to have it tried to do though is I want it to rebuild my icon generator AI.com site and see how far it can get. So I need you to remake an application that allows users to type a prompt select a style and generate an icon using AI. And let's see, can we upload images? So let's just give it a, uh, a little snapshot of what I want. So let's just do this and I'll s upload that. And then I'm also gonna say, please make it using Next.js because that's what I code with. Let's just go ahead and run it and see what it can give us. So one thing I noticed about Bolt is that I think behind the scenes is using stack blitz. So all this code that's generating, you can use stack blitz to basically go in and edit inside of VS code that's in your browser. It's not really running locally. It's in their own like web container thing. I, I don't really know too much about it. I'm not a fan. I like running my code locally, honestly. Um, but we ran it and it looks like it failed. So the idea is that it kind of runs through steps and it creates some initial files, it updated the page, TSX, it created an icon generator TXX component, it made a layout, and then it failed to run dev. So uh, let's see what the problem was. This command failed, command not found next. So I'm guessing it didn't even run an npm install or something. Uh, but one thing that's cool about this is it does run commands for you because this is like an environment that's kind of all isolated. They can just run commands directly in the terminal and not worry about messing stuff up. I don't know how I'd feel if cursor ran terminal commands directly for me without my permission. I imagine one day one of these AI tools is going to install rootkits on everyone's machines and take over the entire internet. But for right now, let's just go ahead and fix this problem and see what happens. Yeah, it didn't even make a package JSON. Okay, so one thing I'll say about AI is that the initial like create something from scratch part doesn't work that great usually. I would recommend that you start with a starter kit or some type of project that's already kind of laid out so that AI can understand it and start adding on to code that you already have there. For example, I have a web dev code starter kit. Go to wdcstarterkit.com if you want to get a free starter kit written in Next.js. And I tried to make it as polished as possible, so go check that out. Okay, so here's the app it generated. We have the ability to describe an icon, and then we can also select a style. And then we click on generate. I wonder what happens. Let's just go ahead and click it, and it displayed a little box. Let's look at the code real quick and try to figure out what's going on here. So we have a page. This is doing an icon generator. Now, I personally don't like how it put a component that's specific to a page inside of a components folder over here. Like that's that's not what I like to do. So I'm gonna say instead of putting icon generator in the components directory, I rather it be co-located in the app directory next to the page that uses it. And then let's just go ahead and submit this and see if it can refactor existing code pretty well. All right, so it did move it. That's pretty good. So it can easily change files and move stuff around. Let's see if it deletes this file when it's done. Okay, it updated the page and then it, uh, it removed the component by running this command for us already. So that's actually pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty powerful. Um, one thing I'll notice when I'm using cursor is that sometimes it just doesn't import stuff. Sometimes it just, you have to do a little bit of manual step, which is fine, but um, let's just go ahead and run this gradient, see what happens. Again, just a blank image. Now also, it seems like it's smart enough to know that it can put use client at the top of these things. Like it seems like it knows Next.js a little bit better than what Cursor does for you. I have noticed that Cursor will create files that are like client files, and then they don't have use client at the top. So off the bat, this thing seems like it knows Next.js app router a little bit better, which is pretty nice. I don't know if they train the model differently or what model they're using under the hood. Um, but let's just continue on. So now when I submit this, it's just setting the icon to like a static URL. Instead, I want to have it call a server action. That server action needs to invoke OpenAI and try to generate an image using the prompt and the style. So I'm going to say, can you instead have the form call a server action, which then calls OpenAI to use Dali app icon using the prompt and style. Let's see how this works. Also, please add loading indicators and display error 
notifications if something goes wrong. Also, please make the prompt required and show error text if the form is submitted without it. All right, let's try this out. Let's see how it can handle longer things. One thing I noticed with cursor is that the more information you give it, the higher chance it's gonna mess up. So if you give cursor like a prompt of 20 bullet points, there's a high chance it's not gonna even do half of them or not, maybe even like a quarter of them. Um, and so what I've found is that typically you have to go by one by one. It's like, okay, what is the, what is the smallest thing you can try to add in? Let cursor do it. Let's move on to the next thing. Let cursor do it. And then you get a code review. Now for what I'm seeing with Bolt, like I'm not seeing a code review uh, feature anywhere. It's just kind of making changes and I don't have a chance to go through and figure out, okay, like what are you changing in my code base? Which personally I don't like. I want to have intellectual command over like my code to know what's happening because as your code base gets larger and larger, if you don't know how your code is structured and how it works, it can get a little bit more difficult to like even maintain because eventually this stuff is going to break and you'll have to go into the code and figure it out yourself. All right, so now we're getting a bunch of failures. Basically, it's trying to use a module that doesn't exist, can't resolve use toast, blah, blah, blah. Let's just try to let it fix it and see what happens. So I brought in Radix UI, React Toast, and it did some stuff. It added experimental server actions. Okay, so this is like trained on old data, right? It, server actions are not experimental anymore. Like you can use them. And so I think it went through it and actually like modify my next config and it added experimental server actions. That's kind of weird. Uh, let's also look at the package JSON. What version of Next is this even using? 13. So that's another thing. It's It's not even using the latest version of Next, which... Uh, that kind of sucks. So if this thing had a better code review, maybe I would have caught that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say, I notice you installed next 13. I need next 14 where server actions are not experimental. Update the next config. Now this thing keeps failing. So I might have to actually go figure out why manually, which is such a drag. Do I want to manually code? Other than that, I mean, it keeps failing on like, it just can't seem to get this React Toast going to, yeah, let's just let this keep going and see what happens. This is selling the latest version of Next and it should be able to hopefully clean this up a little bit. And like, I don't know if it's broken right now or if it's just taking a long time to actually like host my Next.js application. But I will say the one thing I just don't like is I don't want to code in a browser. I want to code on my local editor because I have a fast computer with a lot of cores and a lot of memory. And I don't want to have to wait for some like virtualized container to run my code because that took at least a minute. That took like a full minute to start my Next.js application and it just failed. So it's like I could have had that done in like five seconds, um, but no. So let's just try to fix the problem again. I think what they need to do though is like I want to be able to click on these updates. Like, okay, update package JSON, click it. I want to see a diff. I want to see what changed. Like, what did you change with the next config? What did you change with the package, Jason? Because right now it's like, I have no idea what it's doing to my code base. All right, let's try a couple of things. It's working now. I'm going to submit it. Okay, this is required. Great. An icon or an app that generates app icons. Very meta. Let's just say gradient. Let's click generate icon. All right, that's actually pretty cool. I mean, like, it's doing pretty well. Let's look at the page. And look at the icon generator. If you scroll through this code, I mean, like it added all the error handling I asked for. It added the toast over here. It did the loading indicator. You look at the action. It's calling Dolly with, this looks like the correct API call. It installed the um, SDK properly. I just need to set an open API key, which honestly, I don't know how to do. Can I just put a .env file here? All right, I'm gonna make a quick secret key. Uh, I'm gonna delete this after this video. So I wanna make a .env file. There's no vim. There's no VI, there's no nano. So I guess I'll have to do this the old fashioned way. We'll have to like echo um, open AI API key equals, press the key. And then I'm gonna have to just put that in a .env file. All right, there we go. The files are created. There's no way to like right click on the files that I can tell and like make a new one. I guess I could have used AI to do it for me. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, like it would be nice if I could actually like do stuff with the file system here. I don't have to go to stack blitz. Like maybe I should go to stack blitz to do the editing and like it'll sync up. I'm guessing that's what I need to do. Um, but anyway, let's just go ahead and see if, uh, I can do this now. 
All right, so let's test this out. I got the API key there. Let's just go ahead and say an icon for someone trying to sell carrots. And then we're gonna just make this a flat icon. Let's just go ahead and generate it and uh, let it cook a little bit. Okay, look at that. We got an actual icon here. Um, so yeah, we basically just recreated a very, very minimal style of my own product using AI in like absolutely no time. Granted, there's more things we should add in. Like we need to add in a database. We need to add in authorization, authentication. So now let's get into some of the tricky stuff, which I, I guarantee you it's going to fall apart on. I'm going to say, can you please set up my project with the latest version of Drizzle ORM using SQLite? Now I chose SQLite because um, I'm pretty sure Postgres is going to require like running some type of Postgres instant somewhere. I don't think we have access to Docker inside this stack blitz container. All right, little error. Let's just go ahead and try it again. All right, so it's installing Drizzle ORM. It's installing the better SQL Lite driver, I believe. And then it's installing a bunch of other stuff. Let's just look through this. So it looks like the files it's trying to create are valid. Like those are typically the format you need with Drizzle. You need like a schema file, an index file. Um, let's just let it kind of do its thing and see if it works. So looking at the server action, it actually inserted the information into my database. And if I look at DB, I have a schema here where I can store the icons that are generated. But unfortunately, it looks like there is an issue. Could not locate the bindings file. Uh, so could not locate the bindings file. So this app is definitely not going to work right now. Um, we could try to fix it using AI. So it installed a driver that doesn't work in the web container environment. So it's installing a different one called libsql client. So again, that's the one thing I'm not really a fan of, like this whole ecosystem. It's like, I don't want to code in web containers, like whatever that is. Like I, I want to code on my machine because I'm going to be deploying to a Linux machine. I'm not going to be deploying to wherever StackBlitz is going to host my stuff. Now granted, libsql might work both on a node environment and a browser environment, uh, but we'll see. All right, another issue. Cannot load native add-on because loading add-on is disabled. Uh, I, I could try to fix it again. So I can't do that either. So now it's switching over to pure JavaScript SQLite implementation that works in the browser. So at this point, it's doing stuff that I would probably not do in my real project. Like, I don't want to code like I'm coding on the browser. But I guess it knows that this stuff is not going to work on their environment. It looks like it made a SQL file. All right, this thing failed yet again. It's probably installing some older version that it just doesn't know about. I'll try fixing it one more time, but like this is a state of AI tooling. Like it's great to build out a UI. If you just want a UI, it works great. But then like the whole like the configuration part of building out an application, it just falls apart. There's so many libraries that are not compatible with different runtimes. And unfortunately, whatever Bolt New uses, the web container stuff, I personally would never use. Okay, so it's trying yet another thing. It's installing yet another thing. It uninstalls the SQLite.js and it installed, I don't even know what it's doing right now. It's just literally installing everything. Let's just go ahead and just run this again and see what happens. Generate the icon. That should hopefully now store it somewhere. It's using an in-memory class. Okay, so it got that. Let's go and look at, do we have like a SQLite file now? Okay, yeah, it basically it's just storing these things in memory. So big, big fail there. So honestly, this is just like a quick review on it. Is it powerful? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. It was able to correctly build out this UI with the error states and the error notifications and also the server actions, the call, open AI, all that worked pretty flawlessly, right? After I set my API token, it just worked. And then it displayed the uh, image. Okay, let's try one more thing. I'm gonna see if I can scale the image down in Node because that's something I'm doing in this project. I scale down the images a little bit so that I don't have like a three megabyte image that people have to download. So can you use Sharp to scale down the image to 256 by 256 after it comes back from OpenAI? Okay, so it's installing the Sharp library. Hopefully this also works in a web container. I'm gonna bet money that it will not. Bet you this will probably also fail as well. Let's check out the code real quick. Let's go to actions. So it brought in sharp and it basically fetches the image. It gets the blob, the array buffer, and then it converts it and then it tries to convert it. And then we should get the buffer back and that's what we should be returning. So I mean, this looks good. Uh, I'll say an app for uh, selling carrots and I'll select 3D style this time. Let's generate. See what happens. And it failed. Let's try to figure out why it failed. I'm guessing it failed because like I mentioned, 
Sharp probably won't run correctly on this. Uh, so this is failing to fetch. So I've tried using StackBliss to like pull in my starter kit and just install it, like do an npm install and it failed on various issues. Also, I tried bringing in another project that was using Convex. Its npm install failed due to socket hangup errors, but it's just, there's too much friction. I would probably never actually code using StackBliss because you run into weird issues like this where it's trying to fetch the image over here. Like it's just trying to fetch the image from a URL, but then it says error, like you can't do it. So I'm guessing there's some type of like security thing in place that doesn't allow your containers to like do different things, but maybe it's fixed now. I just said fix the issue. Let's just try it again. A carrot app. Uh, let's just do this, generate it again. See if it can make some progress and it failed again. UND error socket. So now I get to spend 30 minutes, an hour, trying to look through the internet, trying to figure out how to like get this working and I don't want. So what are my final takeaways of this? I think the code that is generating seems pretty accurate. Like other than it installing the wrong version of Next.js, like the sharp stuff it added in worked well. The open AI stuff it added in was accurate. Everything else seemed like it worked pretty well. And I'm kind of impressed with that. I've seen Cursor kind of give bad code once in a while. Um, but so far this thing has been pretty spot on with the code it's generating. And the entire project structure that it's setting up, like it works pretty well. My critique is A, I want to run this locally. I don't want to run this in some some browser. And so from my perspective, what Bolt is, it's a sales funnel that gets you to use StackBlitz personally. Until they have like a run local version, like there's no way I'm going to use their actual like hosted solution. Now I like the UI. I think the user experience is pretty nice, but I would recommend that we add diffs. Like I want to see what is AI changing at this point. It's more of blindly like just trust it. It's going to work. And it does work for the most part when it generates the code, but I need intellectual control over my code. So I know what it's doing, right? I've been coding for 10 plus years. I want to be able to review the code. Uh, yeah, the terminal doesn't have Vim, doesn't have like Nano, doesn't have anything on it, which is not very useful. Like I would like to at least have Vim. I can go in here. I can't even like create files in this editor. Now granted, this is all beta. This is all beta. So like I am critiquing it a little hard for a beta product, but they release it to the public. So I'm going to critique it. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys play around with it, try it out. Uh, it's pretty cool. I I'm curious what you guys can build with it. And if you think it's better, than cursor but overall i'm going to stick the cursor because it's kind of it's built into the environment i like to code with all right that's it have a good day happy coding